Hi everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, LearningDSLRVideo.com, and today we have on the show Caleb Pike. Caleb is a uh, camera operator, editor, and podcaster based out of Chicago, Illinois. Caleb uses mostly DSLRs to shoot documentaries, commercial work, and educational tutorials over at DSLR, DSLRVideoShooter.com. So Caleb Wick, welcome to the show. Hey Dave, thanks for having me on. So, you know, we have did a podcast about a year ago, and that's about when you kind of got into it, not you got into it a little bit earlier than I did. Um, and so over the course of the year, you've kind of helped me out, which has been great. We've, we've kind of talked over the last year. So what kind of uh, projects are you working on these days? Uh, well, a couple of things. Um, recently shot a music video, which I'm hoping to kind of work through and show people coming up here for too long. That was real fun. First one. So that was a uh, learning curve, but had a really good time. Awesome uh, band. And uh, also in the works is a short documentary on contact juggling, which I have a little bit of footage out there, but I'm hoping to this spring shoot a lot more with the, the jugglers. Um, it's a real interesting form of juggling. So check that out. And then uh, a lot recently has been more corporate stuff. So the stuff that pays the bills, some of it can be kind of dry at times. So I've got three of those projects going on and uh, those will be great to, to finish up and, uh, kind of go whole hog on the more creative stuff. So the the juggler type stuff, are you shooting that at a faster um, frame rate than your normal um, normal commercial type work? Um, A little bit of everything. Uh, I've actually shot, shot most of it on 24 just because I want to naturally show the, the way they juggle. Um, it's unbelievable. When you watch it real time, you, you it looks like it slowed down because they're so talented in the way they uh, can, um, you know, manipulate all their, the, the juggling balls. So since you've started uh, using DSLRs for video about a year ago, what kind of things have you learned over the, the past year that you can share with my audience or even myself? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, so much. Like the reason I got the camera was because I wanted to go to film school, but couldn't afford it. And the 7D really let me kind of play with things that other cameras couldn't probably. So the bigger sensor and whatnot. Um, the biggest things I've been learning is really the, like the use of depth of field because we kind of take advantage, like we take it for granted how big these sensors are now, but to really understand how to use that. Um, and, and on the tech side, like backup. So I've done a ton of work building kind of a backup raid on set system, um, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully I can do some talk about that more in the future. Uh, figuring all that stuff out. And of course you can probably tell like lenses and optics, I'm just going nuts over all that stuff. Cause that's new for me and a lot of us who are used to these little cameras is we're used to one stuck fixed lens. Um, but with all these, it's just amazing the choices and the creative options we have with all these different lenses. So those have been really, really huge. And well, just like how to really get a good image out of the camera, like when it comes to exposure. Um, and just trying to mastering these funky little, funky little cameras for video. So in terms of your, the lenses, you know, there was one video you did, and if you haven't checked out Caleb's site, you should definitely go there. He's got some great video tutorials on how to do different things. Um, one of the ones you did, I thought was really interesting and I do need kind of a macro lens. You showed a bunch of video clips where you did a, um, what was it? Like a, a bunch of coins, um, that was really, really close up. And, and use, I think it was an extender type of thing. And, it, and all these different lenses that you've used over the last year, even the vintage ones you've talked about, is there, um, you know, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, what situations do you do you, do you use these all these different lenses for? Um, like the macro or some of these vintage lenses? You're just going after a certain look? Yeah, I mean, every single lens, like, first of all, there's just a focal length, wide, telephoto, all that kind of stuff. But there's also each lens has a very unique characteristic to it. Um, and so I, I'd like to work toward in the future getting sets of prime lenses just so that if I let's say I went out to do a shoot and it was like a supposed to be an like older time frame, I might want to use an, a different lens for that. But I want to use the same consistent lens type because they all have the same like color profiles and whatnot. But in general, um, you know, at first is just to get a set of lenses, you know, all the different focal lengths. But uh, over time, really been able to see the differences between them. So the first lens I had was the Canon uh, 50 millimeter f1.4. 
and that's still kind of the workhorse. I love it for because I can use it for photography. Autofocus works awesome. But recently, I've really been getting into uh, manual lenses uh, in different types. First of all, they're really affordable, but also um, the variety you can pick up is very, very different, and they all have different uh, tones to it. So, really, it, it comes. It also depends on the project. So, like some of these projects. Um, we're put in a situation we don't maybe have everything perfectly planned out, so we can't use whatever lens we specifically might want to. So if we're thrown in a situation like that, we'll want to use like zoom lenses. Um, so I'll, I have two Takina zooms right now and a Nikon manual kind of for a mid-range zoom. And those get used a lot for just getting our shots. And they do are great lenses. So if I'm put in a situation where I may not like uh, event style or something like that, definitely going to go to the lenses or the, uh, the zooms prime wise. Um, yeah, it does depend on the project. Uh, I do like the Canon. Um, it is a little warmer, like the, the temperature is warmer than a lot of the Nikons that I've, uh, worked with, but, um, that one, that one works for if I just use that. Uh, otherwise, um, I've been playing with a lot of these Nikors, which are great because they're very affordable and there's really kind of like two levels. You can get the AI or AIS, which is the newer ones, or the real old school non-AI, like 1960s, 70s lenses. Um, and uh, they, they, they have a very cinema look, like they're, they're not as sharp as the Canons but um between the way the optics work there's less breathing so the zoom there's no zoom effect on those uh primes so um so it does definitely depend on the project i do sometimes really enjoy just taking one old lens and going out and shooting an entire little project on it just with one lens um because you can kind of get a unique look with the same optics throughout the whole piece so that's but it does really depend on the project yeah, the the my fifty prime is kind of my workhorse as well, and um, I'm looking to buy the I think it's the Kina eleven to sixteen zoom. What everybody keeps talking about, so right. I'm kind of saving up for that one. Yeah, same here. So, um, in terms of lighting gear, I'm always looking for um, recommendations on lighting gear and soft boxes and stuff like that. What what kind of stuff have you purchased over the past year that's worked pretty well for you? Actually, I haven't purchased much at all but i we do a ton of renting for these bigger projects um like right this setting right here is this just the same cheap lighting that we've talked about and i've had forever like the smith victor and i've got some lights on the ceilings some construction lights all that kind of stuff and that that gets a job done for sure for like a setup like this and a lot of the podcasts um also a lot of phone core use a lot of that but on set the two things we've been using a lot are kino flows and um the re frenzels so those are those uh hot tungstens and they uh they've been probably the workhorse we usually rent a couple kits of those and they have the barn doors they all have the same color temp and um between those two those have been the main workhorse for us and the kinos like they're super expensive but uh i think that's probably my favorite light hands down is kinos they're, they're daylight balanced fluorescent um decent size very cool and uh but they're just great because you can go in like this this other music video i shot downtown um it was awesome because we could go almost anywhere and use daylight coming in through windows and the kino because they were balanced uh so that's really really nice but those those aries at the same time they uh the barn doors and the way they operate makes it incredibly fast and easy to get the exact look you want so they have like rotating barn doors so you can close them down and make like a slice of light and then rotate it which allows us to do really fast um, background lighting so like normal some of these projects we'll do in one area but we'll keep changing location within a building this way we can quickly set them up throw a slant on the background make kind of a more dynamic setup um, so those are kind of the two main lighting gear reviews i'm really excited about led though i think that's if personally to move uh light wise is what i want to do eventually is get a set of uh leds so when the uh canon 5d gets upgraded maybe here in the next month or so or i don't even know maybe six months from now are you going to be tempted to uh upgrade from your 7d to uh the the newest 5d very very tempted i mean like if i know when the release date is coming or the pre-order date 
I might just save a like auction on eBay and just be ready to hit, you know, save on that. <laughs> uh, because I've been like, I've worked with a couple five D's and those, the full frame sensor is gorgeous. Like, you know, a lot of people say, ah, it's, you know, it's all the same. It's close enough, but until you actually pick one up and shoot on it, you will be blown away. And, uh, but the, th the one that's current now, you know, I have a 7D, I'm happy with it. And I'm not real crazy about the current 5D's uh, drop to standard def when you hit record. So monitoring is kind of a pain. Um, so that's not worth it for me right now. But if the new one comes out and they fix at least that, I'll be seriously considering saying goodbye to the 7D and maybe, uh, maybe moving to like a 5D and a T3i or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, very tempted. Yeah, I think at some point it would be kind of fun to make the T2i my backup camera and then get a, a, a newer 5D at some point. So one more question for you. I wanted to ask about picture styles since I've been all about picture styles lately. Um, when you're doing kind of a corporate video or something like that, um, or anything, uh, what kind of picture style do you mostly stay in? Um, either standard or I take standard and drop contrast down one and sharpness down one. Um, if it's in any situation where we really have a ton of control, I might just shoot it with a, uh, different picture style, a custom one. Um, but for the corporate stuff, yeah, usually just hanging around standard, you know, it gets a job done. It's easy to set up across cameras quickly. So, well, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, Caleb, where can people find out more about you? Um, dslrvideoshooter.com is the main site obviously and uh but i do do a lot on twitter so twitter.com slash kayla pike uh c-a-l-e-b-p-i-k-e -E. um hang out there a lot so those are the main sources for sure all right that's all the time we got uh thanks for watching talk to you guys later bye